Santa's on WABC. Brian, welcome. What's your question? Yes, uh, what would he say about Planned Parenthood and uh, after seeing the videos? Well, those videos were, uh, were, were made up. The whole thing is fake. There's no reason to believe they were true. They were made by the right-wingers. We all know that Planned Parenthood is simply family planning. And these are good women. They work around the clock to uh, help women make uh, valuable choices for their health. And we know that there is no controversy whatsoever when it comes to Planned Parenthood. This is not abortion. Abortion is another word created strictly by the right wing in order to drive women away from uh, health choices that are clear. This is why the danger of the right wing, they want to kill women. They want to drive them out of the country. And that's why your only choice is a progressive like me who will make things fairer uh, than you could ever believe. Not not as good as the others. I Actually, my voice went off from eating the yogurt. See, this is the problem when I go to a healthy diet. My voice changes for the worse. I, I should have eaten something terrible, but I went to a goat yogurt and my voice changed. I lost all of the depth of it. The Pavarotti. Oh, you know what I want to hear? I was driving home last night from the city after the show, after Chinese food, when I saw all that pork on the menu and I had confidence that America would survive the Islamist hordes because I realized looking at all the pork on the Chinese menu and as I walked around uh, the um, wharf area and I saw the young Chinese people after work drinking beer and eating you know dim sum and eating pork products I realized that the Islamists are never going to take over China they're never going to give up their beer and their and their pork and that of, of course was triggered because Obama banned pork products in federal prisons in order to cater to care and the uh, Muslim majority that seems to be taking over virtually every aspect of this government under Obama and I was I was encouraged by the fact that uh, that uh, the Chinese will never give up their pork and their alcohol, no matter who takes over what. But in the car on the way home, on my Harmon Cardin system, I couldn't listen to radio for one more second. I could not listen to talk radio. I couldn't listen to the news. I couldn't listen to music. So I turned on a classical music station, and I heard Pavarotti singing. Uh, it was it. Um, yeah, I think it was. Uh, I have to get exactly. I don't. I don't want to say. I think it's Rigoletto the clown. Is it Rigoletto the clown? Yes, where he sings the the, the clown, and I realize we're all a clown. At the end of the day, what man listening to, to the show has not been a clown? Can you raise your hand if you tell me, no matter who you are, no matter how strong you are, macho you are, you're telling me that there hasn't been a time in your adult life when you have not been a clown, for for one reason or another, and that that I thought is why an opera that is about the clown who sings about his view of the world and it's of course in that case it's a broken heart over a lover who has rejected him in a way we're all Rigoletto and has a universal theme and it was so amazing to listen to that opera and I made a decision in the car that you know what I want to do like eventually in my life so many things I want to do yet and one of the things I want to do is I want to hear the greatest rendition that's still available on earth by the greatest tenor who's living singing Rigoletto somewhere on earth another thing I want to do which I have not been able to do, is I want to go to Vienna for a Christmas concert uh, in the snow. I, I, it's crazy stuff like that. Would you believe it? But I hear you can't get tickets. They're sold out two years in advance. Would you believe that? The Christmas Eve concert by the Vienna Philharmonic you can't get for two years in advance. And I think about the greatness of Western civilization. you got to understand there's another connection. When I hear Pavarotti singing Rigoletto, or I listen to... Any classical music that's great, and I think of the 7th century vermin, the 7th century animals that are being imported into this country, those that our soldiers bravely kill when they go over there because they have to be wiped off the planet or there will be no planet, will be living in a thousand years of darkness unless they are stopped. There is no getting along with them. There is no compromise with them. Compromise is not in their book. Compromise is not in their soul. Compromise is not in their heart. Unless they are annihilated, we're all going to die. We'll live in a thousand years of darkness. They're not like any other religion on the planet. Every other religion has come here and integrated with every other religion. Every other religion has learned to get along with every other religion. Every other religion gets along with every other religion. There's only one that doesn't. And the cipher in the White House is bringing them in as fast as he can. Not screening them, not asking whether or not they are the bad ones or the good ones, looking the other way and giving us that mumbo-jumbo with that deep voice of his, giving us the BS day and night. And yesterday he gives a signal. He bans pork in federal prisons. If that doesn't indicate which side he's on, I'd like to know what has to happen. Do you have a, a Rigoletto running? Uh, sorry, I asked for the wrong one. It's Pagliacci. Got it wrong. Okay, we're going to take a break, come back to, uh, it was my mistake, Pagliacci is the clown. 
And that is the one I want to play because this is great civilization. This is a lesson in the greatness of Western civilization, as is the battery, as is the diesel engine. Look at everything in Western civilization. Look at the church spire. Look at your museum. Look at your art. Listen to the great music. And ask yourself, are you willing to fight to defend this or not? Because it's dying in front of your eyes. Now, it started with a group of radical feminists who tried to tear down Western civilization, going back, I would say, about 30 to 40 years. I remember when they appeared on the, on the stage, they were radical, insane women. They were mad at their fathers. They were mad at men. They hated men. And they screamed uh, against men, down with the patriarchy. But their chant was, hey, hey, ho, ho, Western civilization has got to go. And they made decisions. And amongst the decisions was to penetrate the American university and steal the ideas of the universities and poison the minds of the young. Now, fast forward to today. You fundamentally have a feminist president running America, a man who symbolizes everything that is wrong with the anti-American message. He undermines everything good about this country. He gives a speech about Columbus Day, throws a bone to the Italian-Americans, and then stabs them in the back and says they brought disease and poison and hatred and everything else. Uh, his preacher uh, at the Million Man March, Jeremiah Wright, comes back more virulent, more virulently anti-Jewish, anti-Semitical than something you would have heard in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. Jeremiah Wright gave a speech this last Saturday on the National Mall that could have been heard under Adolf Hitler. And it went without notice by the wonderful guardians of the truth in the media. Guardians like that useless idiot, that sack of an empty suit, that sack of empty jeans, Anderson Blooper, who tonight will pretend to be a moderator of a Democrat debate, which is nothing but a pre-planned, orchestrated introduction of Hillary Clinton to the American people. O'Malley, no one knows who he is. He's a neuter. Bernie Sanders was a construct, is a construct of the Hillary machine, or may as well be, it doesn't matter, to make her look more centrist when in fact she's more dangerous than he is as a leftist. So that's where we are today. But go back to Western civilization. It's being destroyed across the globe. Whether it be in the assault upon Christians overtly in the Middle East by radical Muslims who have been burning churches without a word from the American press to speak of. The Pope himself rarely says a word about it. This fraudulent prophet from the Vatican had the world stage at the UN and instead of making a direct appeal to protect Christians, to stop the looting and the burning and the raping and the murdering, instead this fraud from the Vatican talked about global warming, something he knows absolutely nothing about. As I said many times, the only thing this Pope knows about climate is that when it rains, his, uh, his attendants uh, open an umbrella. And yet suddenly he's espousing the entire leftist agenda, lock, stock, and barrel. So Western civilization is under assault everywhere on earth. And you say, well, what can I do about it? And what can you do as an average person listening to the show? I don't really have an answer for you. I do know that you need to know that it's being assaulted from within and from without. KKOB, Dave, welcome to the program. What's on your mind tonight? Oh, Dr. Savage, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to speak to you. I was listening to you today, and I heard your your reference to Pagliacci, and the only thing that I saw was on my mind was it was the soundtrack to the demise of America, watching our government continually chip at our rights and our freedoms as if it was there. Uh, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm speechless. I, 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 have a, I know you're speechless. Denmark has imported Muslims by the tens of thousands, and a new poll amongst these throwbacks, 77% of Muslims in Denmark think the Quran's instructions must be applied fully. That means a 7th century view of the world is now being promulgated in Denmark while Obama has opened the floodgates to more of them from the Middle East than you can ever imagine. If this is not an outright assault by an army of throwbacks upon Western civilization being orchestrated by American progressives, tell me what is. It's a war out there, and all of you know that you're involved in a war. All of you recognize it and feel it in your heart. You know there's a war. There's a war against everything that you believe in, everything dear to you. And it's being orchestrated by several generals, one of whom resides right here in the White House. His name is, do I have to say it to you? 
It's not Bernie Sanders. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. When I see, when I go out in San Francisco at night and walk around, I see the young Chinese people. It's a largely Asian, Asian city. And I see young Chinese eating uh, and drinking. I said, they're the only hope we have, the last bulwark against radical Islam. They're not going to accept Sharia law. Yeah, go ahead. Try to convert mainland China. Make my, Go make my day. That's why the Chinese joined the Russians, by the way, in attacking ISIS. Because they uh, want to kill all the Uyghurs who came from Uyghur. The Uyghurs are Chinese Muslims from a previous invasion going back centuries when the, the Arabs invaded the belly of China and converted millions of people to Islam through the sword, through the flame, through rapes. This is uh, the history of Islam. It's always been through violence. It's not the religion of peace. Christianity, by the way, had a, had a long period of conquest and conversion. You know that. But right now it's uh, Islam doing what they've been doing for a thousand years or more which is uh, trying to drag everyone back to the seventh century. Anyway, the Chinese have sent their own special forces to fight alongside the Russians and to hunt down and find the Uyghurs, the Chinese Muslims, and kill them in Syria because they don't want them coming back to cause trouble in China. Wouldn't it be nice if Barry from Honolulu said, any American who joins ISIS or Al-Qaeda, you're losing your American passport, you're not coming back here. Why is he, why is he not doing that? answer i don't know now the more i listen to trump who i'm 100 percent for i've told you i mean i don't mince words i'm not like hedging my bet i love donald trump i think he could save america he's truly a nationalist in my opinion he's as close as we're going to get to a real nationalist in this day and age when i listen to his speeches sometimes i think i'm listening to my own words so i'm thinking and this has been going a long time because it started with one of my previous books my 17-point plan for saving America. A lot of those points wound up in his... It's not like because I'm so smart, it's either his staffers are listening to me and writing it up as though it's their own, or he likes me so much he's listening in his limos and then channeling me because he knows that I really have a stethoscope to the heartbeat of America. 21 years, believe me, you learn some things about America. But he's willing to say what everyone knows to be true. And yes, I'm going to tell you something. In my great new book, Government Zero, which will be out in two weeks, you can buy it on Amazon, I have a chapter entitled Zero Strategy Against ISIS. And one of the subheads is the enemies within. Where is the media? We are the new good Germans. Islam's thousand-year war in the West. Direct action for nuclear Iran. Denying the global threat. But then we zip up to chapter seven, and I write these subheads. Tell me if you agree or disagree. What country is this? Sleeper cells amongst us, leaving Christians to the wolves, the sleepers awaken, importing crime, importing disease, importing socialism, illegal immigration for profit. Can we get America back? And that segues nicely into zero religion, Lenin's Pope. And I talk about polit politicizing the papacy, channeling Lenin, the power of religious authority, the Pope attacks free speech, the Pope promotes junk science, the real agenda behind the climate change scam, the Marxist encyclical on, uh, on care for our communist home. And I know just where the Pope co is coming from because I've researched him for six months now. Here's a little uh, story for you. Top of MichaelSavage.com. Denmark, 77% of Muslims think Quran's instructions must be applied fully. They're importing 7th and 8th century throwbacks who believe that the Quran must be f factually followed to the letter of the law. 77% of Muslims think a Quran's instructions must be applied fully. Why would you bring any of them to a Western nation unless you're a suicidal liberal? Why? Can anyone answer that question? Research show that Islam is the only religion where people become more violent the more they practice their faith. Did you know that? A poll among Muslims in Denmark shows this. Well, I can go on and on, but you don't want to know that. You don't want to know it. You have your heads in the sand. Many of you are liberals. You're good people. And you want to believe everything will work out. You want to believe that eventually that Muslims will stop being fanatical. When they get here, they're going to change and become good liberals. Is that true? Is that what you really believe? Or do you just want to make believe this problem will go away? How could you not see what's going on? In New York, 
two days ago, a, uh, a Muslim, an Arab, threw a Molotov cocktail at two Jewish boys.